Hello, my name is Christoph, and um, seeing as how the video of our Hillman Minx got quite a few views, I thought I might just take you on a little bit of a tour of what we do after winter. Um, my dad asked me to uh, prep the car a little bit and do a little bit of maintenance work uh, before this car gets put on show, on display at the um, Antwerp Classic Show. The Roots Group Club asked us to put the car there. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, but first I had to do a few things and you know if this this is uh, just me impulsively um, making a video with my iPod video but if this gets uh, quite a few views you might see better videos in the future. I don't know. I thought this car was uh, not going to be that, that popular as it was as it is on the internet now. It's got 10,000 views or something. I don't know. Either way um, let's have a look. So, welcome in the garage. Um, for those of you that do not know, this is a Hillman Minx Mark V from 1952, uh, which is uh, a car that's almost um, half a century old, which is kind of cool. Um, this car is uh, made in Great Britain um, and uh, under the Roots Group, if I'm not mistaken, you can see a little bit of a logo over here. Um, so yeah, uh, this is the car, it's been sleeping all winter, um, that's my car, that's a BMW E3320i Touring, uh, a little bit of proud about that. Um, but yeah, it's been uh, sleeping all winter here in Belgium, it's not been really a cold winter, but it hasn't got out. Yet I have started it before I made this video, so you're not gonna get the uh, the first start after about uh, I don't know six months. Uh, but I will tell you, it was quite a bit difficult to get this thing running. I mean, it's if you put the shock on, it starts right away, but you can't put the shock on forever because it's just gonna uh, what's the word in uh, in Dutch we say for uh, say <laughs> anyway. Um, so you have to get this block a bit warm. You have to get it a bit. Um, you have to get a bit of heat in it. This is a lateral engine, four cylinder. Uh, lateral means the the valves are on the side. Uh, I forgot which side, but I think it's the other side. No, 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 it's this side. No, 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 it's the other side. It's the other side. Either way. Um, so the valves are over here. If you would see like a, a cross section of this engine, you would have a valve here, a valve there, and a cylinder over here. Um, so, and this engine is completely made out of cast iron, uh, which means that it's very difficult to heat up in contrast to like a more modern aluminium engine, which heats up quite fast and runs smoothly. This thing is entirely cast iron and even has. Um, uh, an iron um, carter pan, I think that's the word. Uh, so yeah, this is obviously the underside of the car. Uh, what my dad asked me to do was change the oil and check the fluid levels and give it a go, and which I did. Um, later on I still have to put gas in it because it's almost empty. Um, maybe if I still have enough memory in my iPod I will um, let you hear the start and the starting procedure of this car it's quite interesting, it's not stock, normally you should uh, just turn the key press the starter, maybe a little bit of shock, maybe a little bit of gas but you don't have to do anything special, we have added an extra button because um, because of some charging issue, issues with the battery okay so everything is finished uh, it's about time to give it a go I'll just show you a couple more things um, This. As you may or may not know, I don't know if this is uh, normal for these old cars, uh, but that's the oil filler cap. It also serves as the um, carter ventilation. Uh, behind here are the push rods for the valves, so that's that's kind of cool. I mean, that's what you get with a lateral engine. I mean, uh, like Willys Jeeps, they have the two-liter lateral engine. This is um, a 1.1 liter lateral, lateral four-cylinder engine, I think quite sure it's a 1.1 actually um, four speed car uh, no overdrive one rear um, 
one reverse gear. And uh, yeah, the last thing I wanted to show is this is the dipstick. So it's all the way down there. Just plugs right down into the uh, yeah, right down into the block like a regular dipstick actually. Uh, but the dipstick itself is not uh, stock. It's just some rebar that we made fit in here because the original dipstick was made out of cast tin and for you, for those of you that do not know about cast tin it is very very brittle especially old cast tin so what you would uh, end up with is the uh, actual end of the of the dipstick <laughs> could fall off could have fallen off into the engine bay so we just made you know we made this you know, as you may be able to see just some rebar with some some indentations in it okay so let's start this baby up this is by the way a nice clean shot of the garage nice and clean is full of cars of course I mean two cars two cars fit in this garage um, but a lot of people think this is a nice cozy garage so I might show you some of the things on the wall here the roof is entirely yellow because my dad smokes a lot and yeah, that's I made that when I was uh, 14, I think. Martini racing, I like those colors, still do. Uh, here's some um, some plates of some uh, some some things my dad did, some uh, travels or whatever whatever you call them. Um, that over there is an old timey poster of Volvos. My dad works in a Volvo garage. So yeah. So enough of that. This is the inside of the car. As you can see, very uh, spartan, very barren. Uh, just the things you need. It doesn't even have a heater. It has no radio. Um, if you wanted a heater, you had to go to um, uh, some company that installs heaters in cars like this, uh, and then you would have like some uh, electric heater or something like that. Um, but yeah, this is uh, as it would roll out of the out of the um, factory in 1952. Uh, if you want to know this, uh, obviously here you start the car. I'll show you that in a minute. This is the light switch. This is the uh, side ones, the side markers or whatever. It's just the small lights. These are the big lights. Um, and down here. If you can see this, probably not, but you have a switch next to these three pedals. You have a switch and that puts on the high beams. No, it's too dark. So yeah, that's the lights. That's the starter. That's the panel lights. So if you pull this out and the lights are on, the panels work. They should work, but sometimes the switch, this is, this is old obviously, so sometimes they don't work. We might have to uh, fix that. These are the wipers. And that's the choke. We don't use this very often because... As you will see, I mean, it starts right away. You just have to give it a little bit of gas. Yes, my my dad has, um, my dad likes it more when you just sit in the car, wait for it to warm up, and just throttle it a little bit instead of using the choke because it won't it won't turn over as nicely. It won't spin as as uh, as well as it should. Uh, and that's that's the the little pulley for um. For making, uh, for, for opening the bonnet. So yeah, and this is the four-speed. It's on the steering column. So yeah, you get. This is the normal part. You get your brakes. You got your clutch, and you got your gas pedal. Obviously, I will not push this because it's a carbureted engine. Um, and this is. Maybe you'll be able to see this. <laughs> That's the indicator right there. You got one for left and right. And this is the horn, classic horn. Um, so yeah, let's start this baby up. We have a switch down here, uh, also in the dark, so you'll have to trust me on this. This is a switch, um, when you pull it out, the car charges, when you put it back, um, when you push it in, the car doesn't charge, or something like that, I don't know, I don't remember quite. Uh, well, it's been a while since we restarted this car, but when you push it in, um, uh, the car stalls. So no matter what position this switch in, normally if you if you had a car like this, you would um, 
just stop it like that but it doesn't stop that way um, I really can't remember why if you want to know um, just leave a comment and I'll ask my dad again why this car uh, has to why the button has to be pushed in um, but it has to be pulled out to start correctly it will start if you pull it out regularly yeah that's why it's it's um if you just start it without pulling out the button um, the battery will not charge but it will still run but it will just run off the battery if you pull it out this light will turn see if, if I push it in the light will go out so it doesn't charge if I pull it out the light goes on so that means it'll charge and it'll run for much longer than when it's just running off the battery and this is the, um, the fuel level obviously also very cool I believe it's uh, yeah, Smiths who did these uh, gauges as you can see it's, it's cool I mean it's got gallons and liters on there and over here is just kilometers um, we also have one with miles but oh and it, we're not doing 90 kilometers an hour we're just standing still for the record the the little gauge is broken uh, so yeah to start this you put the key in the ignition you put you turn it like this um, you leave the choke as it is if it's really really cold you can use the choke but you don't really have to uh, make sure these two lights are burning uh, are burning or on um, this one is for the charging and this one I believe is for something to do with fuel <laughs> I don't quite remember, but I do know if this one doesn't burn, it won't. If this one is not on, it'll um, it'll start, but it won't um, throttle up. So yeah, you pull the starter, you give it a little bit of gas. It's in neutral. These are the gears. I mean, this is this is first. This is second. This is third. So you you pull the gear lever towards you and put it up. So that's third and fourth. To put it in fourth, you have to give it a little bit of a blip in neutral and then go to fourth. And reverse is pulling out, pushing in, and downwards. So, yeah, but this is neutral. Okay, so the car's like this. Let's start this baby. Everything's good. I put the fuel, uh, put the cap back on. Okay. Okay, it's ready to go. The sounds of a car that's more than half a century old. Nice. Let's see if it'll run without any throttle. That way I can get out and give you a final shot. Uh, it's not it's not quite there yet, but it'll do the trick. Okay. This is me releasing the uh, the clutch. In these old cars, I mean it's it's best if I just push the clutch. In my idea, it's a little bit less friction on the engine. Okay. It's a nice day outside to go for a bit of fuel. And that's it. Thank you for watching.